So again, we're talking about radical expressions. I just read the uh, top part out loud. And basically what we're going to be looking at is we're going to be working to rewrite these as the product of prime factors. Everyone, if you have a calculator out, uh, type in the square root of 50. And let's get a decimal answer. It should be just a little bit more than 7. 7.1. Um, okay. This is approximately 7.1. Is it exactly 7.1? No, like that decimal trails on for a while, right? Yeah. Okay, it just keeps going at 7.1. That's an approximate answer, okay? What we're looking at today is we're trying to find the exact answers, okay? We're looking at exact answers. And here's how we do this. We do use this perfect square that we've been talking about for a long time. And all we do is we basically write this as a, as a series of factors, okay? So 50 can easily be broken into 2 times 25, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. 2 times 25 is 50. Okay? And then 25 can even be broken into 5 and 5. Okay? So if I was to break this up, I could say 2 times 5 times 5 is 50. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. If I just look at the number just at the bottom, yeah. 2 times 5 times 5 is 50. I kind of ignore the 25 because it got broken into smaller pieces, right? 2 times 5 times 5 is 50. What I can do there is the square root says that... Um, Basically, you can pull something out of the square root if there's a pair of them, if there's two of them. The square root, basically, it is a understood that there's a two right there. It means that if you have two things that are exactly the same on the inside, two factors, you can actually pull it out. So if I'm looking for pairs. There's a pair of fives. So I can pull the five out. Is, are there any more pairs up here? No, the only other thing that's left is a two. So the two actually stays on the inside of the square root. Okay. This is how you would simplify the square root of 50. It's actually 5 times the square root of 2. In your calculators, what I want you to do is I want you to type in 5, okay, and then put the square root thing, and then put a 2 on the inside of the square root. And I want you to get a decimal for that. What does that equal? 7.1. <laughs> the same thing we got before. That's a really good way to check to see, hey, I know what the square root of 50 is. It's 7.1 approximately. I know 5 times the square root of 2 is also 7.1. That means, hey, I just did what I did correctly. Okay? So the idea is that we're breaking these up into prime factors. Um, it works really well if you can somehow find something in here that is a perfect square because we know that they're going to break up nicely. Yes, sir? Um, why do we have to write it as 5 and 3 to the 2 if it's at equal terms on the same side? Uh, this is a simplified form. It would be like if I wrote... 14, 6. That's like the square root of 50. We know that that's better as 7 thirds. 7 thirds is simplified. Another way that you could write this as, I guess, you could write it as 2 and 1 third. Or you could write it as 2.3 repeating. Those are all approximately equivalent. The most simplified form is this. And you will use this quite a bit in further math stuff. Specifically for the Pythagorean theorem, when we were working with the Pythagorean theorem, Every so often you get an answer as a square root of 50, which is nice. But if you want it to be an exact answer, you would actually write 5 square root of 2 as opposed to 7.1, which is just an approximation. Uh, if you were to become an engineer, if you just wrote 7.1 for, for your specifications as opposed to this, um, you would probably get fired. Because it becomes that, the precision becomes that necessary for accuracy for the entire model whether you're dealing with metals, whether you're dealing with cogs, whether you're dealing with anything else. So precision is what we're talking about. Okay. It's not. This is an approximate answer. It's about 7.1, not exactly 7.1. Right, because your calculator kept going, right? You had to round that. Versus this is still the exact answer. No, it's approximately 7.1. It's actually a little bit less than 7.1, isn't it? Okay, and that's the thing is you might not think it's a big deal. Okay, uh, for instance, if we dealt with money, does that make sense? Let's, can we talk about money? Yeah. Isn't four point seven five percent about the same thing as five percent? No. About the same thing. Rather, it's the same thing, right? Would you rather have if you were uh, investing like a million dollars in the bank? Would you rather have five percent interest or four point seven five? Five. Five. There's a difference, right? Yeah. But rounded, it's the same thing, right? Seven point one is the same thing as this, right? It's not. It's not. Okay? And what we're talking about today is we're talking about 
evaluating these, being able to simplify. This is technically a skill that you will learn, you will use later on. I'm giving you an example for Pythagorean theorems. You're going to use it a lot, um, such as what we've already talked about. So right now we're just working on the skills, and you're going to see where it applies a little bit later. Is that okay? Okay. I, I know that what I gave you as an answer wasn't exactly satisfying. You're probably not completely satisfied, but we're okay. You're learning a skill today on how to simplify radicals. Okay? All right. Number two, what we look for is we decide upon a break of 80. Now, some of you might think, hey, simply that's 16 times 5. Okay? Which is really nice because that's 4 and 4. But hold on. Oh, oh, I said some of you might think that because you know 16 times 5 is 80. Okay? Hold on. And then you would say, hey, that's a there's a pair of fours here, and you can have four times the square root of five. Okay? That's what some of you would do. Not all of you, though. Okay? Remember, four squared of five. Some of you would say, well, I don't know what 80 is divisible by, but I know it's divisible by two. So you might say, hey, that's two and 40. What's 40 divisible by? Well, I don't know. Some people might say 20 and two. Some people might say four and five, or uh, four and 10. Um, let's just say you said two and 20. Well, what's 20 divisible by? Well, 10 and 2, some people might say 4 and 5. Let's just say 2 and 10. Okay, what about 10? What's 10 divisible by? 2 and 5. Okay, so here's the idea. The idea is that if you aren't good with this, just say, is it divisible by 2? Cool. Is it divisible by some number bigger than 2? Well, it was. It was divisible by 16, which was awesome. It broke up really nicely. But you will still get the same answer this way. No matter which way you do this, as long as it's true, you're going to get the right answer. Okay? So how do we figure this out into 4 squared of 5? Because that was the right answer. And the question is, are there any pairs? Yeah. And all we're looking at is we're looking at the prime factors at the end here. Are there any pairs of those numbers I just underlined? Yeah. So, yeah, there's a pair of twos right here. A pair of twos. So I'm going to pull out one two because it's, it's a pair. Are there any more pairs? Yeah. Oh, there's, a, there's a second pair of twos. So a pair means two of them. And then is there anything left over? Yeah, there's a five left over. So it goes on the inside. So we have two times two, which is four over the square root of five. Okay? So that's the process. That's the process. Is that anything that has a pair, you can take that out. Okay? If there's two of them, you can take one out, and that's what goes on the outside. If there's more than one thing on the outside, all we're doing is we're multiplying them together, and then simplifying. Everything that's left over has to stay on the inside. I'm going to do two more of these, and I'm going to let you guys ask any questions you want. Okay? It's the long next one. That's okay. We're going to come back to it. Let me just do one more, then you guys can ask questions. 18. You can break that into 2 and 9. 9 breaks down to 3 and 3. Are there any pairs? A pair of 3. So we can pull 1, 3 out. What's left over? 2. Just the 2, right? Is the 9 left over? No. No, because it got broken into 3. Okay. It's not the 9, because the 9 got broken into 3. And we're going to look at these items here. So I answer here, 3 times the square of 2. Because there's a pair of 3s. Whatever you have a pair of is what you can pull out on the outside. Yes. Uh -huh. Four times the square of five. Yeah. Okay, Brett, what was your question? Um, I like my number two. What if there is one pair of twos, but then maybe there's an extra? So the two, the two would be left over, like the two little two yeah. right here. Yeah. And that two would have to go on the inside. It would be two times five on the inside. It would be ten on the inside. Yes, sir? Add the threes. Where are the threes at for number two? Oh, for number three? Uh, I didn't actually add these. I multiplied these together on the outside. So two times two is four. And the reason there's two of them out there is because there's a pair of twos. And the second pair of twos. This one is this one on the outside. The next is this one on the outside. Carrington. Oh, I'm sorry. Nope, 8 and 10 would have worked. 
Yeah, you just keep breaking them down, and you'll get your all your twos that you need. You can break it down any way, as long as you break them down into prime factors. Yeah, that was my question. Question. Forty, for instance. Why don't you use forty? Forty gets broken down into two and twenty. That's why you don't use forty. If, if it's still broken down, I'm looking at my prime factors. Two times two times two times two times five gives you eighty. Not two times forty times two times twenty times two times ten times two times five. It's not that that gets you eighty. It's just the prime factors, the things at the very bottom of each of the three. Yeah. You'll notice that as we go along. 75. What does 75 get broken into? Nick? Is it divisible by 2? No. Nope. Is it divisible by 3, maybe? Yeah, 3 and what? 3 and 25 that a lot of people in the class are yelling. Is, what's 25 divisible by? Times 5. Yeah, because it's a perfect square. Are there any pairs there, Nick? Pair 5? Okay, so what I write is my final simplified form. 5. Five is the square root of three. That's perfect. Circle it. You're good. Mel, 98. How do you want to break it down? Two and 49. Can you break 49 down into anything? Seven and seven. Okay. Are there any pairs for Mel? A pair of seven. No, not the square root thing. Just seven times square root of... Two. The reason you have the sevens is because the sevens on the outside then. And two left over gives you a square root of two. Sounds great. Tyler Cox, 200, how does it get broken down? Two times 100. How does 100 get broken down into? What's that? Okay, so you want to do it that way? We can do it that way. Two times 50, sure. What does 50 get broken down into? Two times twenty-five. Twenty-five. What does it get broken down into? Five times five. Five times five. Are there any pairs? Yep. What are my pairs? Okay. So there's a, there's a pair of five, so I can pull one out. Any other pairs? There's a pair of twos. So there and there, I can pull that out. Is there anything left over? Two. Just twos left over. So it goes on the inside. What does my final answer turn out to be, Tyler? Pronounce it correctly. What's, two, what's five times two? Ten? What, how do you pronounce this symbol? Square root of two. Can you say it all together? Perfect. Ten times the square root of two. You're so smart. Any questions up through six? Yes, Sierra. How do we do five times two? Okay. There's a pair of two, so that should give you a two on the outside. There's a pair of five, so that should give you a five on the outside. This two right here, since it's all by itself, has to go on the inside. Do that. What does? Can I show that to you later? Okay, let me show that to you later. Okay, 96. Katie, how does 96 break down? Um, 3 and 32. Yeah. Okay, one way you know things are divisible by 3, if you add up the digits, like 9 and 6, uh, if that number is also divisible by 3, then it's divisible by 3. So like 9 plus 6 is 15. <laughs> 15 is divisible by 3. Yeah. <laughs> 32, what do you think? 2 and 16. What's 16 break down into? Uh, if it's a perfect square, 4 times 4. So we can use 4 times 4. And think this out. Are 4 and 4 prime? No. No. But if we were to break them down, we'd just get a whole bunch of 2s. That way, when we take them out again, they just turn into 4 again. So I'm just going to say this is a pair of 4s. Take that on the outside. What's left over, Katie? How many? What's left over? You mean the three and the two? 
On the inside, it's yeah, cool. it's the inside. Too. Well, I'd be the full, and then that thing would be jiggy. Square root, yeah. Yeah. Right. And then <laughs> no, 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 say it out loud. Don't say thing about jiggy. This isn't gonna work. Four times the square root is six. Four times the square root is six. Yeah. Correct. Okay. Now, if you would have went through and broken these into twos and twos and twos and twos, I'm gonna do that really fast in case this is what you choose to do. So say two and two and two and two. We'd say, are there any pairs? Yeah. Well, sure. There's a pair of two. That's two on the outside. There's a pair of twos, but there's two on the outside. Mm -hmm. What's left over? There's three and a two. Which two times two is four. Three times two is six. Four times the square is six. It's just a little bit more work. If you can find a perfect square, there's one reason we went over these. If you can find a perfect square, it does save you time and effort. So it would take questions on that. Yes. I did two times forty or two and forty eight. Okay. Two and times forty eight, yeah. Yeah, and then I broke it up to eighty six. Eighty six, okay. And then I broke the eight to four and two and I broke the six to two and three. Uh huh. Would that equal that? You it should. Uh, I can't remember what you originally broke it into, there was another two. Yeah. So you would probably end up going down this screen right here, this stuff right here. That's probably what it would look like. Oh. It should be the same answer no matter which way you do it. Yeah. Tyler? Yeah, that'd be fine. It's all going to turn out to be the same thing. Yeah. As long as you break them down to prime factors, that's fine. Tyler? I mean, I got the three, I did three and two and three. Yeah, I, I would probably do three and 16, but yeah, that would work out. It would work out. Yes, sir? Uh, is there a pair of twos anywhere? No, it's all by itself. Is there a, another three to pair it up with? Nope. If there's nothing to pair it up with, they get stuck on the inside. I gave this metaphor a long time ago. I don't think it was really great. It was when the show Jailbreak was a first out. I don't know if you guys remember the show Jailbreak. Uh, I've been teaching for a while. Um, basically, the idea is there were two people that looked alike, and basically because of that, they were able to break out of jail, and there'd be like one, basically a free person at the end. The idea is if you don't have someone that looks like you, like a pair, like a pair of fours, if you don't have someone that looks like you, you're going to be stuck inside the jail still. But the four was able to get out. I don't know. It wasn't a great metaphor, but it, it kind of works for some people. Basically, you need a pair in order to get out. If you don't have a pair, you're stuck inside. Okay. Carrington, how about 54? How does that break down? Carrington, you're thinking over there? If you can't think of something really fast, like something really novel, like a nine, uh, you might think of, is it divisible by two? Is it divisible by three? Kind of go like that. So what would you like to divide by? <coughs> nine and six, let's do that. That sounds good to me. What would nine break into? Carrington? Uh, three. three and three. What would six break into? Two and three. Excellent. Are there any pairs of two, Carrington? Okay. Which pairs? Pair of threes. So how do I write this? What's left over? Two and three, so those guys get stuck in here. So this is three times the square root of six. Thank you very much. Three times the square root of six. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Do you have to break down the six or do you do the divide? If you know, uh, I encourage people to break it down. Yes, you do. Okay, number nine. Yeah. I'm not saying that out loud. Uh, you want to do number nine? Okay, let's do number nine. Let's leave that negative on the outside. We'll just worry about this to begin with. How do you want to break down 80? 16 and 5. 16 and 5, sounds familiar. How does 16 break down? The fours, are there any pairs? What does it happen? Times the square root of 5. There's a pair of fours here, which goes on the outside. Well, what else was on the outside? The negative. The negative was on the outside. So it just continues to be on the outside. So it would be like negative times a four, a negative four, and the five has to stay on the inside. So our answer is negative four times the square root of five. Okay, fractions. 
Not fraction. Thank you. Tyler. Okay. And just bring on the inside. Five and twenty-four, okay. And then four and six. Four and six. Two and three. Tom's getting me. On the outside, we already have a negative three, so we'll leave that there. Are there any pairs on the inside? Pair of two. Because we have two on the outside. Anything else? So what is stuck on the inside? Two, three, and what else? Negative three is all the outside. Okay. So the negative three was was on the outside. It stays on the outside. And there's also a pair of two on the inside. On the outside. Everything that was left over has to stay there. Tyler, what does my answer turn out to be? Do we have any questions so far? Nicole. Tell me off number 11. Um, okay. Okay. Is that divisible by 10? Yeah. Yep. 32. 32 and 10. What does 10 break down to? Two? What about 32? 16 times 2. 16 times 2. 16? Four and four. Okay. Are there any pairs? Yeah, four. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Nicole, can you see what the Alright. There's already a five on the outside. I'm just going to bring that down. And then I said five. And are there any pairs? Sorry. Yeah, four. There's a pair of fours. Any other pairs? No. There's a pair of twos pair as two well. Two. So even though they're separated, there's still a pair of twos. And what's left over? Um, the fives. Five and sixteen? Yeah, I would say the five. The sixteen, remember, got broken down to four and four. Oh, so just the five? So just the fives get there. Okay? 5 times 4 is 20 times 2 is 40. 40. And you got to the 5. So 40. Does that make more sense, Nicole? Yeah. Riley? Yeah. Number 12. Okay. Hey, is 14 divisible by 7? Yeah. Is 7 divisible by 7? What are they about to move by? So I'm going to say 7 is going to be 21. Okay. Is 21 going to move by anything? No. Mm -hmm. 7 times 3. 7 times 3. Okay. There's already a 4 on the outside, so I'll leave that out there. Are there any pairs? 7. 7. 7. Okay. Anything left over? 3. So 3. What's 4 times 7? 28. How do you pronounce this, Riley? How do you pronounce that? <laughs> times the radical, times radical three. 28 times radical three. I don't think times. Times the square root of three. Oh, times the square root of three. Okay. 28 times the square root of three. Okay. Fractions. Fractions. Okay. A ton can be broken up if you want to think of it as the square root of 49 over the square root of 64. Okay? Well, what's the square root of 49? Seven. What's the square root of 64? Eight. 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 That would be our answer. Seven eighths. And that's it. Don't change any decimals. Don't give me approximate answers. We're looking for exact don't answers. Don't need any square root symbols because the square root of 49 is the same thing as 7. The square root of 64 is the same thing as 8. Uh, can't simplify that any further. If we could, like if it was 70 divisible by, divided by 8, that would simplify that further if we could.
Okay. Go for it. Go for it. Number 14. We can write this into the square root of 40 over the square root of 81. Let's do the square root of 81 first. That's easy. It's nine. It's just nine. So on the bottom is going to be nine. On top, a little more complicated. I'm going to kind of do this pretty thing sideways. What do we have? Okay. Two and 20. That'd be like four and five. That's giving me another two and two here. Okay, do I have any pairs? Yeah, there's a pair of twos. So really, the square root of 40 is going to be equal to two square root of, so there's a two left over and there's a five left over, so I'd be a 10 on the inside. So here's what I have as my answer. I have divide by nine on the bottom, so that's the square root of 81. And I have 2 squared and 10 on top, so all I need is just write that on top. It looks like so. Now, if the 2 on the outside and the 9 were divisible by the same number, I would divide it. Okay? But if the 10 and the 9 were divisible by the same number, I cannot divide that because that's actually the square root of 10, not actually 10, but it's the square root of 10. So again, let me just say that if this was like 3 squared of 10 over 9, 3 and 9 are both divisible by 3, and I just have the square root of 10. I would have to simplify it down to that. Okay? But if I had 2 square root of 90 over 9, I can't do anything about these guys or offhand. That won't work. Okay? That does not work. I don't do that. Okay, number 15. Pants. No. No. Day 1 of 3. Day 1 of 3. Number 15, what do we do? Same. The square of 100. Okay. Can you break down the square of 3? Yep. So let's just do the square of 3. Okay. Mitchell, do you have any questions? A lot of questions. Why don't you write them down and I will see how I can address them either personally or in front of the entire class for whatever is useful. Um, and I can I can give you really, really good answers if you want. Okay? I do want you to write them down. That way I have some time to prepare so I can give you the best answer possible. Does anyone have any other questions? You guys do have an assignment today. It is, ooh, let's look at this. It's about 15 problems. We just did 15 in class. We'll do 15 for homework, unless you can get them done in the next five minutes. I'm sorry today's lesson was a little bit longer than normal. It was the first day.